kids, welcome to Kingdom Kids virtual version. I hope you guys are having a great morning. Come on and get up on your feet. We're going to start this morning off with a little bit of praise. Welcome. Right now we're going to do a super fun activity. Right now I'm going to say a bunch of things. And if only God can do it, then I want you to stand up. But if you can do it, I want you to touch your toes. All right, let's get started. The first one is ride a bike. You better be touching your toes because I know you can do that one. Next is create animals. <laughs> I tried before. I can only create animals in my cereal, but God can create animals. Next is, can you name all of the stars? That's a little tricky one, but can you even see all the stars out there? I know that I can't. Have you tried? I think only God can see all the stars. Next is play basketball. That's right, you can do it too. Next is read a book. You better be touching your toes because I know you can read a book. What is your favorite book? 
<laughs> That's a pretty good one. I like the Bible too. Next is play video games. You can do that. What's your favorite one on your phone? Do you got games on your phone? Next is causing a river to suddenly stop flowing. I tried that and it's really, really hard. I almost drowned. <laughs> Next is save people from their sins. I think only God can do that one. There are so many stories in the Bible that highlight our great need for God. He is the one who sustains our life and also provides a way for us to live with Him eternally. God is so powerful and He's able to do so many things that we can't. And He gets all of the glory for what He does and who He is. Julie. What? Are you ready for today's story? Yes, I'm so excited. Today's story comes from Joshua chapter 3. After Moses died, God gave his people a new leader. His name was Joshua, which means the Lord saves. Joshua was going to lead God's people into the special land that God promised to give them, which will finally be their home. And by this time, God's people have been wandering around in the baking desert for 40 years. Can you believe that? So you can imagine how sick they were from the sand and things yellow and the tents and walking and being hot. And now how happy they were to reach the edge of the desert and to see their beautiful new home right in front of them, all cool and free and lovely. There was a couple of problems though. First, they had to cross the Jordan River. Now, I want everyone to close your eyes. Come on, close your eyes. And imagine that you're standing on the bank of a strong, rushing river. Imagine that you have to get to the other side, but you don't have a boat. What do you do? Um, can I build a raft? We can build a raft. We can collect things and they could probably do that and cross. Yeah. Uh, Julie, you have to remember that you're not by yourself. There were over hmm. a million people that had to cross that river. So yeah. I don't know if a raft is a very hmm. good idea. Okay. Can we maybe build a bridge? We could probably find wood and pieces and things and kind of work but, together since there's a but, million but, but, people. Where are you going to get all the material for right. the bridge? Can't build a bridge with the sand, huh? No. Bummer. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm out of ideas. I, Here's I don't know. Here's the thing. I have good news for you. You don't have to come up with that idea because God had a better plan. He wanted to show his people that he was so powerful, powerful enough to bring them victory, and he would only get the glory. So he shared a plan with Joshua. So guess what? Joshua readies all the people to cross Jordan River, which was the only thing dividing them between the promised land that God has promised them and where they were at. They camped beside the river for three whole days, just as the Lord commanded them. At this time of the year, Jordan River was flooded and had a lot, a lot, a lot of water, and it was impossible to cross by foot. But God told Joshua to tell the people that the priests were going to carry the Ark of the Covenant and lead the people right through the water. Let's talk about the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was a big box. It had to be carried by four priests. It was one of the most important things to the Israelites because right there on the box is where God's glory and presence would be. They knew that as long as God's glory and presence was with them, they would be able to conquer everything. Inside this ark were three very important things. First was the Ten Commandments that God had written, which showed people how to live. The second thing that was in there was a plate with manna, symbolizing God's constant provision for the people. And the last thing that was there was Aaron's staff, which miraculously began to grow buds, flowers, and almonds. All these things served as a reminder to the Israelite nation that God was always there to keep his promises, that he never failed them, and that his promises and presence are stronger than anything. He told the priest to step into the rushing water, and when they would do this, the waters would stop flowing. So as soon as the priest's feet touched the water, the water stopped flowing. The river dried up wherever the priests walked. 
It was just like, do you remember that one time at the Red Sea and it parted for Moses? That's right. They took the ark and carried it right into the middle of the Jordan River and then stopped. While the priest stood with the ark, all of the people passed through to the other side. They did not even get wet. That's just amazing. God wanted his people to always remember that he stopped the Jordan River for them. So he told Joshua to take 12 men mm -hmm. from the 12 tribes of Israel to take 12 stones from the river. After everyone finished crossing the river, Joshua called the priests from the river. And as their feet left, the river waters just came right back into place as they had been. They brought the stones to their camp as a memorial so that the future generations might remember the story of how God brought the Israel nation through the Jordan River on dry ground. The Ark of the Covenant was important to the Israelites because that is where God's glory would abide. That is why they had to carry the box everywhere they went, even through the desert. But Here's the good news. You and I don't have to carry around boxes today because God's glory doesn't live in a box anymore. When we accepted Christ into our hearts, we invited Him and His glory to live inside of us. So in a way, you and I, we're like His new boxes or new dwelling places, which means that wherever we walk, God's glory and presence are always with us, making us victorious in every situation that we find ourselves in. But just like the Israelites had to place things inside of the ark to remind themselves of God's faithfulness, we should also have things that remind us of how God has been faithful to us. Right here, I have an ordinary box, just an old box I found around my house. Maybe you have something similar in your house. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. But I was walking around my house and I was looking for things that would remind me of how God has been faithful to me. So, let's take a look. First thing I have in here is an avocado. I know it's probably silly, but it's one of my favorite things to eat. And the reason I decided to put it in the box is because God has always been faithful to provide food for me and my family. There was never a time that we didn't have something to eat. And I think just like the Israelites put manna inside their boxes, we always have to be grateful for God's faithfulness to bring us food. The next thing I have is some band-aids. I'm reminded of the time where I was really, really sick as a little girl. and. No doctors were able to help me with anything. No medicine was able to help me. So my family prayed and God came through and God healed me completely. I felt like a new, new girl again. I could run and I had energy and I wasn't sick anymore. So this reminds me of God's faithfulness when he was my healer. And another thing I put in here was a couple pictures of my family. And this reminds me that God has blessed me with family around me who also love the Lord. And it's such a great blessing. You probably have brothers, sisters, and mom and dad with you, and your grandma, grandpa. It's something to be thankful for. God is faithful to bring us family and friends in times of need. So find a box. Fill it with things that remind you of God's faithfulness. And wherever you find yourself in hard situations, where it seems impossible, kind of like the Israelites stood in front of a raging river. Look back into the box and remind yourself that God is on your side, that He has been faithful before, and He will be faithful again.